want to talk a little bit more about Grubler's equation. Grubler's equation is what we use to determine the degrees of freedom of a mechanism. Um, we have learned that generally that degree of freedom for the planar systems that we'll work with is equal to three times the lengths in the system minus one minus two times the full joints minus the number of half joints. Um, Grubler's equation is very powerful. Um, however, it should not be applied um, without some um, consideration or um, some common sense because sometimes it will generate the incorrect value for the degrees of freedom and when it does that it, we call that a paradox. When Grubler's equation um, generates or gives um, the wrong mobility or degrees of freedom, M. When might this occur? Uh, I'm going to show a couple of instances of this um, paradox and uh, show you how to find these so that you don't run into this problem when you're calculating degrees of freedom for a mechanism. So as an example, let's consider um, an all revolute four bar. And so I'm going to draw in my joints first, these joints down here at the ground. I'm going to go ahead and draw in the links. And then finally here. Okay. And so there's my um, four bar. And let's go ahead and see what Grubler's equation would give us for the degrees of freedom of this mechanism. Um, the number of links that we have, so we'll count our ground link, this link 2, this link 3, this link 4, and then we're going to count up our uh, full joints, of which there are uh, one here, here's a second one, third one, fourth one. So we have four full joints, these are all revolute joints, we have no half joints. And so if we go back to Grubler's equation, for this particular mechanism, we'll find that m is equal to 3, um, 4 minus 1, minus 2 times the full joints, of which there are 4, minus 0 half joints. And let me just uh, go ahead and say that for this particular case, um, in which there's no half joints, 4 full joints, um, 4 links, we're going to get a degree of freedom of 1. But that's great, because that is correct. However, um, what if we had a small change to this linkage such that the degrees of freedom should still be one based on our intuition, kind of just based on common sense. And so again, I'm going to draw in, start with my revolute joints first. This time I'm going to have three revolute joints across the top and three revolute joints across the bottom at ground. I'm going to go ahead and draw in those links. Draw one all the way across here, and then draw in the ones here. These ones up here. Okay. Now, the motion of this particular mechanism should be the same as the previous, right? So, as we move, for example, if we move this link on the left in this direction, we'd expect the one on the far right to go in that same direction. Right, so still one degree of freedom. However, let's see what Grubler's equation will give us. If we go ahead and count up our links, we have a link for ground, two, one big one all the way across, the fourth one that we had before, and now this extra link, link five. For joints, again, no half joints, but we have a full joint there, full joint here, full joint here, full joint here, full joint here, and a full joint there. And so if we use Gruber's equation to calculate, we'll find that m is equal to 3 times um, the number of links, in this case it's 5 minus 1, minus uh, full joints, in this case we have 6 full joints and again no half joints. And so we'll find that our degrees of freedom are 0, and when we have 0 degrees of freedom, that means that we have a structure. No ability to move, however we know this mechanism does have the ability to move, 
the way that we know this mechanism can move is just based on our intuition. We just look at it, we can see that motion is possible with this mechanism. So we know that this must be a paradox because what we know can happen and what we know the degrees of freedom should be is not equal to what we get with Gruber's equation. This will often be the case when we are dealing with parallel links. So in this particular case, we have this link, this link, and this link. They're all parallel. Um, whenever we see parallel links, that's a key to us to be on the lookout for a paradox. Go ahead, calculate the degrees of freedom as you normally would using Gruber's equation, but you cannot suspend your logic. If you get something from that degrees of freedom, um, from Gruber's equation that you don't think is correct, you're very likely um, uh, right in that um, you need to go back, look at the mechanism again, and consider what is there that could be removed, what link could be removed without changing the motion of the device, but giving us the correct value for Gruber's equation. In this particular case, we have these parallel links. All of them are not necessary. And so let's say, for example, if we removed this one, Right? We'd be removing one link, and we'd be removing two joints, and that would get us back to a case of following where we have one degree of freedom. So it takes a little bit of um, knowledge, a little bit of uh, intuition to be able to look at a device and see that indeed motion is possible, and it's not actually a structure um, as was shown in this particular case. This will oftentimes also happen when we're dealing with rolling members, and I'm going to show that uh, situation next. So in the case <coughs> of rolling members, a paradox will often result. And so let's give ourselves a revolute joint here with a wheel around it. This is the ground location. And the same thing, another wheel rolling on a revolute joint there. Okay. And we're going to say that these wheels are in compressed rolling contact, so there's no possibility of slip. Meaning that here at the intersection we have a full joint because we have no slip possible at this location. So if we then go to count up our links, we have a ground link a second a wheel and another wheel. So we have three links in terms of joints. We have a full joint here at the revolute joint. We have a full joint where um, no slip happens. And we also have a full joint here. And so if we go to calculate our degrees of freedom using Grubler, we have 3 minus 1, minus 2 times 3, minus 0, no half joints. And that's going to give us 6 minus 6, or 0, again, another structure. But we know that for this particular system, if we were to turn this wheel clockwise, we'd expect the second wheel to rotate in this direction counterclockwise. And so motion is possible. This is not a structure. Okay? This is another situation where you have rolling members where you will oftentimes see Gruber's equation give you an incorrect value for mobility. Again, a paradox. And so be on the lookout. Be on the lookout for systems in which there are parallel links or systems in which there are rolling members. We cannot suspend our knowledge when using Gruber's equation. We must look at the mechanism critically before we accept uh, whatever value for mobility Grubler gives us. Thanks.